Science toys have been in the headline because a campaign has been launched to stop them being sold in some stores as toys for boys. Ginny Smith has been investigating both the consumer and scientific perspectives and began by asking one of our listeners, Daniel Richardson, to ask his children, Kala and Isaac, for their opinions about boys and girls. Who do boys like to play with best? Other boys. Who do girls like to play with best? Um, other girls. Oh, what sort of games do girls like to play? Princesses. Do you like to play princesses? I don't think so, no. No. What sort of games do boys play? Um, Jedis. Do you like playing Jedis? No. And can boys play with girls? Can I do you like girls? You don't like girls. It might sound like a playground argument, But this week, both Boots and Tesco's have announced that they're changing the way they label toys. Following an outcry by Let Toys Be Toys, they've pledged to arrange toys by function rather than by gender. I spoke to Joe Watts from the group. Well, Let Toys Be Toys is a campaign led by a group of parents who are fed up with the way in which toys are marketed to one gender or another. And our campaign focuses on the way that toy retailers display their toys. So the main aim is to get toy retailers to take down their signs saying either boys' toys or girls' toys. And why do you think that's important? It sends lots of messages to children about what kind of interests they should have and what kind of toys they should play with. Certain things like, you know, girls don't like science and boys don't like playing with dolls and things like that. It influences children in their choices. Their argument might be making headway down the high street, but we wanted to find out whether children's toy choices really are all down to marketing or if there's something biological underlying them. I went to talk to Vicky Pastersky, a research psychologist in the Department of Paediatrics at Addenbrooke's Hospital. My research has primarily looked at influences on the development of behaviours that on average show a difference between males and females. And I've primarily looked at differences in children, which includes, of course, toy preferences. Probably the most balanced view of the development of these preferences in children would be to say that there certainly are societal influences and we are social animals and we definitely are influenced by socialization. But it's also fair to say that we're influenced by biological processes that start from the moment of conception. So what kind of differences do you see? Probably besides gender identity, that is boys identifying as boys and girls identifying as girls, the largest sex difference that we see in children is toy preferences. And hundreds and hundreds of studies have shown that girls prefer certain toys and boys prefer certain toys. And in my research, when we consider something a girl's toy or a boy's toy, it's not because we've deemed it this, so this is what we think society has deemed this toy to be. It's what do the children actually choose? When you put them in a room with a set of novel toys which toys do the girls choose and which toys do the boys choose. And it turns out, universally around the world, little girls like to play with dolls and little boys like to play with weapons. And my research has, for various reasons, looked at how do these behaviours develop. And what kind of reasons might there be for these gender differences in preference? If we look at the animal literature... We can see in in mammals, for example, in non-human primates, there are differences in behavior, for example, sexual behavior. And it has been shown hundreds and hundreds of times that the primary factor that influences differences in other animals, for example, mounting behavior in males, is prenatal androgen exposure. So it appears that testosterone, which is a hormone produced primarily in males, influences brain development and changes brain structures, and those structures are controlled to some extent the behaviors that we see sex differences in. And if you change the levels of hormone exposure, you can change the behaviors. So prenatal testosterone levels influence differences in behavior between male and female animals. But could the same be true for humans? Work done on genetic disorders may provide a clue. The most well-studied disorder is called congenital adrenal hyperplasia, which means that the adrenal gland overproduces testosterone, even in girls, beginning prenatally. So these girls are exposed, in some cases, to so much androgens or testosterone that they are born appearing like boys. So it changes their body, and to some extent it changes their mind. So these girls 
are moved along the spectrum toward masculine behavior. They prefer weapons, they prefer cars and trucks and so forth. So while they're not completely boy-typical, they're more boyish than their unaffected sisters, for example. So this suggests that the androgen has an effect. Other studies have even shown that infants as young as 12 months prefer to look at toys that are traditionally played with by their gender. So if it is the case that hormone levels mean girls will choose a doll no matter how it's labelled, should we really be worrying about the marketing? Jo explains her view. Even if you're talking about subtle differences, they're just tendencies. You can't categorically say that all boys like construction and all girls don't. So we're concerned about the children that don't fall into the stereotypes. So a girl who likes the science might walk into a toy shop and see science kits and things to do with space and planets underneath the boys' toys. And, you know, she'll get these subtle messages that science isn't for her. Vicky had a slightly different take on the matter. I think it's insulting to suggest that these children don't know their own mind. Certainly they're influenced by marketing and certainly we're influenced by society and we want to fit and we want to do what others have suggested is the cool or the right thing to do. But I think children on the bottom line know their own minds and they know their preferences. I don't think that if you move the doll to another corner of the store, girls will no longer choose it. And I would like to say, and this is probably the most important point from my perspective, the problem with those who are quite disturbed by the fact that there are sex differences in children's toy preferences is that they're assuming that it's worse to be a girl. It's worse to like things that girls like, and I think that's disparaging to little girls. So is this campaign just saying that girls' toys are rubbish and all girls should be playing with cars and construction kits? Joe argues that this isn't the case. Equally, I think it's really important for boys to know that it's okay to choose kitchen sets and that it's okay for them to like flowers, it's okay for them to like fashion. I think there's more of a social stigma for boys liking girls' things than there is the other way round. Now over to Vicky for the final word. Does all this really matter? By adulthood, these differences are almost negligible. There are almost no differences between male and female adults when it comes to any sort of ability. So fundamentally, we are far more similar than we are different. And I don't think the children playing with toys that they prefer is going to influence their outcome 